Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for taking the time out to be here today. I'm Karan Mulchandani, the founder of a passion-based social enterprise called Enlightened Sapiens, and I'll be your host for today. So on behalf of South Asia Bonsai Federation, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you here for joining us for part two of our program titled Salute to the Seniors. As you may know, South Asia Bonsai Federation was established in 2018, which comprises of five countries, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Since its formation in 2018, as the ninth arm of the World Bonsai Friendship Federation, SABF has been promoting bonsai in every possible way and creating a platform for all enthusiasts. This program, Salute to the Seniors, has received tremendous appreciation I hope you enjoy the second part as well, where, we'll be, where we will be covering the 70s, 80s, and 90s. A feedback form is going to be sent in all the groups through WhatsApp, as well as in the chat box right now. Would request you all to kindly fill this during or after the program, as it will help us better the experience for you the next time around. So now, without further ado, I present to you the president of South Asia Bonsai Federation, Mrs. Sneha Prasar, to welcome you all. Good afternoon. Greetings to all participants from India and around the world. The South Asia Bonsai Federation is privileged to present the second phase of Salute to Seniors. Today, we showcase the more recent period of post-independence Indian bonsai history. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of these seniors that created in us a confidence, the confidence that we have the ability. We too can procure good plants and can make better bonsais. They talked, they walked, and created experiences and events for us to benefit from. They have very kindly sent us their videos to record their journey for posterity. No video has been edited or reduced in length so that all the material is preserved I'm sure you will enjoy every moment of their experience. SABF is proud to provide a non-partisan open platform to share and grow the world of bonsai in India. Something that has been possible only, only with the help of all the clubs, all the stakeholders to further improve our efforts I'm providing the feedback link and request all of you to please, please respond on that. It really helps us a lot. Let us now start today's presentation. Salute to the senior part two. Over to you. The 70s saw the spread of bonsai art through systematic teaching and learning. From personal gatherings of sharing experiences to proper basic structure of teaching was developed. Jyoti Parekh's ACE leadership created a nationwide network of bonsai classes. 1978 onwards, regular bonsai classes were held. Books on bonsai by Indian authors were available. Certificates were given and annual exhibitions were held. Let us all enter into the era of 70s.
Hi friends, I'm Meeta Mehra, the committee member of the Bonsai Study Group of Indo-Japanese Association, Mumbai. I am honored to be the MC for my Guru Jyoti Parikh, our co-founder and director of the Bonsai Study Group of the Indo-Japanese Association, Mumbai. Jyoti Parikh is also the consultant to the World Bonsai Friendship Federation. Jyoti Ma'am started Bonsai in the year 1979 and has completed successful 42 years. Jyoti Ma'am has authored four books on Bonsai and landscapes. Jyoti Bain has uh, around 100 students or more, out of which 70 are actively participating in our monthly workshops and classes that are held in suburbs as well as in town. We have about 20 chapters affiliated with the Bonsai Study Group, which has been founded by Jyoti Ma'am. All over India, these chapters have been affiliated with our group. Jyoti Ma'am has also taught culinary art, candle making and gift wrapping. She has been a teacher who is very exemplary, who believes in teaching full heartedly and sharing every bit of knowledge that she has. Jyoti Bain has got exceptional leadership qualities and management skills due to which she has been successfully holding exhibitions in India and in the world outside also, in many countries outside also. Jyoti Bain believes that every person is a student till the last day of her life. She believes in teaching, she believes in learning till date. Interviewing Jyoti Parikh is our very own pillar of support, Mr. Ali Hussain Barodawala. He is also the senior committee member of the BSG group of the Indo-Japanese Association Mumbai. He is also the trustee of the Indo-Japanese Association Mumbai. He is always there for us with his infectious smile, his pleasant persona, always smiling, ready to help, whether it's exhibitions, whether it's conventions, whether it's official or non-official matters, his advice really matters to us. He is a calm and collected person who's always there, ready to help, always with a smile. We thank Sne Ma'am and uh, we also thank Sudhi Jadav Sir of the SABF for creating this wonderful platform of saluting all the senior members in the world of Bonsai. Truly thankful, Mrs. Meeta Mehra, Mumbai. Jyoti Ben, welcome to Salute to Seminar. Jyoti Ben, you were instrumental in spreading Bonsai in India. From whom did you learn Bonsai? You see, Ali, what happened that I was a graduate in botany. And uh, then I came to know about the concept of Bonsai. And luckily I found very good teacher, Sunita Vaswani and Ratna Khadani. And I learned from them the basics of bonsai. And the whole idea appealed to me and I started practicing and making bonsai. And I could do so because we have a terrace flat and uh, I could make many bonsai uh, and uh, experiment with them. And uh, my family as well as the, my students who are coming to learn cooking uh, and the other crafts, they also started appreciating this nice art. And that's how I started the bonsai. That's great. Mm -hmm. How did you expand your knowledge of bonsai center towards a very new art? Yeah, that is the thing that uh, I learned very basics from my teachers. But then my students wanted to learn this hobby or at the same time with the other things I was teaching. And in that case, I needed to expand my knowledge about the horticulture part of the plants as well as about bonsai. So I read many books got from the library and then uh, I started making notes of my, uh, you know, the research and it turned out into the book, The Wonder World of bon Tropical Bonsai. And then uh, I started teaching along with the other things. And even uh, later on with Nikun's, uh, we wrote many other books as you all know. So that is how it started going on. That's great. Why and how did you start Bonsai Group in Mumbai? See, bonsai is not something which you make it and you stop doing it, like other arts. Here you need constant attention, constant guidance and work on your plants time to time. So my students needed the guidance further after learning. So I approached Mr. Poekar of Indo-Japanese Association and we formed the group. Uh, so it turned out to be bonsai study group of Indo-Japanese Association, Mumbai. 
and that was in 1979. And uh, we continuously uh, started meeting and conducted workshops. And since we had the space, it became a little more easier for me to do it. And later on, Nikul also joined me from 80, 1980 onwards. It became much more easier and as a joint hobby, and we could expand. Now, since I was invited for the other things uh, to the many cities in India, uh, I encouraged them to form the bonsai groups there because they also needed the guidance. Uh, so, uh, you know, we were going there, teaching them. And they formed their own groups, which we got affiliated to Banzai Sadi group, which could guide them easily. Plus, you know, we started inviting uh, the Banzai teachers from other countries to further our knowledge. And uh, so they, they were taking workshops in Mumbai, as well as we started taking them to our chapters. That's how they also learned more about Banzai. So this is how. Uh, our, uh, you know, the journey of bonsai started in India. That's great. Thank you for talking to Sri to see us. Okay. Thank you. Hi everybody. We are gathered here to honor those who have led us on the bonsai path. I am Uma Ayengar and I am the MC for Lata Rao. Lata Rao holds a postgraduate degree in botany from Bangalore University. She started practicing bonsai in 1987 and in 1990 helped establish Riksha Bonsai Circle, Bangalore. Since 1993, she has been teaching bonsai and giving lectures and demonstrations at local clubs and colleges. She has demonstrated at Mangalore and Mysore Bonsai Clubs. She is the founder secretary of Riksha and has held the position of secretary for 15 years and has been the president for 10 years. Lata has been interviewed by Anupama Veda Chala, who is a bonsai artist practicing the art of bonsai for the past 25 years. She is the secretary of Briksha Bonsai Circle, Bangalore. Namaskara Lata Ji. All of us in Briksha Bonsai Circle know you are a botanist and you have affinity towards plants. What drove you into this art form? I grew up in two amidst plants and trees. So love for trees are always there. Since I've taken a botany as my uh, subject to teach, so natural affinity towards collecting a lot of plants was always there. Uh, in 87, when we came back to Bangalore, we were living in an apartment. I couldn't have a big garden. So the only way I could have so many trees was by having bonsai. And in 1975, during one of our travels, I found one book by Paul Lechnovich, which had beautiful bonsai pictures. So this was always in my mind, someday I am going to have that kind of bonsai. So since 87, I've been trying to grow bonsai and learn more and more. And this has become a passion till now. It can never stop. Till the last breath, I continue to do all that. That's nice. In those days, uh, any study material was a challenge, and social media and internet wasn't there, exposure was less. So, how did you choose your teacher? It was very hard to get study material. Uh, there were no books in any of the libraries. Even when I was studying the botany, I never found the uh, any study material about bonsai. I was not ever at all till 1975 there was such thing as bonsai. So the earlier days I met Sula and she had a lot of knowledge. She was often going to Bombay, bring out, uh, learn something new and show us in our meetings. And we were getting using bonsai magazines. It had a few articles. So we used to try out thread grafting or something new, on rock style or various things. And there were very few books were available at the time. First book that I had was Drop the Bonsai by Jyoti Parit. And in 1994, I, uh, I went to one workshop by uh, Master Susuma Nakamura, where I met a lot of bonsai hobbies and saw um, many, met many teachers. I met Ravindran and the, of course, Paris. The whole world of bonsai opened up for me on that particular day. Even met Miss Panditji. So we were able to get a lot of bonsai. 
So for us as youngsters, we are blessed to have Sula Zaveri, who is my teacher and you in our I have, yes, I have a great respect for Sula and she is my teacher. Yeah, we, we have both of you. How did you, those days, how did you manage to hold club meetings? As well as, how did you inform your members? It was uh, mostly held, we had a very small amount as a membership, so we didn't have any money. So we used to hold in our houses, members' houses. We were only nine at that time, so we used to just call them. So this is a meeting this time in this, uh, this particular house. So as we grew, we became 21, then we started posting cards, later on in that letters. Later on, nowadays, we are all using WhatsApp and emails. And uh, meetings were mostly held in houses. As we grew, we were uh, holding in uh, wherever the uh, free club halls were available. You, uh, some members uh, influence, we got some clubs. We're uh, allowing us to hold our meetings fully. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Warm greetings from God's own country. I'm Dr. Vivian Gopal, a member of the Kerala Bonsai Association. We take pride in presenting our president, Master Ravindran Damodaran, an international consultant with the South Asian Bonsai Federation. Master Ravindran, a lawyer by profession, has devoted his entire career to the bonsai art which he has been practicing for the last 51 years. He has more than a thousand masterpieces to his credit. Some of these are displayed in the beautiful bonsai garden that he opened at Padmanapaburam two years back. Nikki Bonsai Garden. When we step into Nikki Bonsai Garden, we are magically transported immediately to a beautiful Japanese garden world. Master Ravindran, an energetic, enthusiastic president, has been taking regular classes and workshops for us, the members, to keep us educated. Introducing our president is our secretary, Srimadhi Jaya Nair. Srimadhi Jaya is also an enthusiastic bonsai artist, practicing it for the last 21 years. Srimadhi Jaya has been our secretary for the last 15 years, which shows how popular and successful she has been. With her energy, enthusiasm and managerial skills, Kerala Bonsai Association has grown from a small group of 25 members to the present membership of more than 150. Introducing our master, Devindran, is Srimadhi Jaya Nair. Morning, sir. Morning. Let us start the question and answer session. Okay. What drove you to take up the art of bonsai? From my younger days, I have a fascination and uh, admiration for uh, old trees in forest and mountains. And when I met uh, one of my uncle, uh, Dr. K. P. Madhavan Nair of uh, Agriculture College in Chwandram, he told me there is a technology to grow trees uh, in pots. So that uh, gave me a lot of interest. So, and he suggested to collect uh, wild trees, uh, especially ficus and everything, from mountains and forests. So in that way I have started. Which was your first bonsai? Banyan was my first bonsai that I got it from a mountain near to my home. What other plants uh, you had trained during your initial days? Initial days I collected a lot of uh, species, especially ficus from mountains and uh, I started growing it in epic containers. Okay. What was the reaction of your family when uh, you started practicing this art? In our tradition, we are not supposed to grow banyan and religiosa trees at home. So my grandparents and parents objected it in the earlier stage. After two decades, they came to know it is an art and uh, they have no objection and uh, they supported it. What all you did to hunt for bonsai materials in Asia? Initially, we climbed uh, mountains and forests and uh, collected a lot of material. 
Then I found that uh, all these materials are not sufficient. So I searched new new species and uh, um, plants from nurseries. How will you know that the species you collected locally is suitable for bonsai? Early stages, uh, I have no knowledge about uh, species which are suitable for bonsai. Then from my experience and uh, from my knowledge, I came to know that all materials are not suitable for bonsai. Then I searched for new new species suitable for bonsai. What are the methods of propagation of good materials you propagate? Uh, I am mainly depending on air layering, cuttings and the seeds. After joining the Kerala Bonsai Association and becoming the master trainer there, how did you find classrooms or places for conducting workshops regularly? So initially, we are gathered in the members' house and we worked on their um, plants. Some other members also bringing a lot of uh, their plants and we are working there. Later, we found uh, one hall, a uh, common hall, so that uh, regularly we are uh, gathering and uh, doing the classes and the training. How many members do we have at the club? We have nearly 150 members. Any other training programs you conduct? Yeah, in 2013, I opened my Nikki Bonsai Garden and Training Center at Patmanapapura. There I placed nearly 500 bonsai and more than thousands of uh, materials. So I started to give training to public and uh, bonsai growers. Uh, there um, uh, I am getting a lot of school and the college students for training. Do you go outside your state and train other clubs if it was? Yeah, after 1997, uh, I got a lot of invitation from various clubs in India. So I, even now I am regularly visiting all the clubs and uh, conducting classes and uh, workshops and uh, demonstrations. After the onset of online workshops and classes, did you find it easy to add members to your club? Yeah, it is very easy to add members. I have got a lot of requests from various uh, people mm -hmm. from all around India and abroad. That's all, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you for your valuable time. Okay. Welcome. Hello, friends. I'm Vijaya Doli from Indian Bonsai Society, the oldest bonsai club in India. Today, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to present Mrs. Mangla Rao, a very senior and eminent bonsai artist from Pune, Maharashtra. Mangla Ji is also a privileged member of Indian Bonsai Society. She is the founder member of Friends Bonsai Society Hyderabad and was its president for five years. She has been practicing bonsai for more than 45 years now. Manglaji has been conducting classes and workshops and contributing articles to magazines and newspapers, sharing her vast knowledge. She has received many prestigious awards. One such award is the WBFF Award for spreading bonsai knowledge in India, which she received in 1985. Her bonsai photos have won acclaim in the WBFF World Bonsai Photo Contest as international winners for five successive years. She has authored a book, Basic Bonsai, which is a must for beginners. She is an acclaimed bonsai instructor of BCI. Talk, interviewing her today is Rajiv Vaidya, another senior bonsai artist from Mumbai. Rajiv is the president of Dambavali Bonsai Club. He is on the advisory committee for SABF. He was one of the international demonstrators at a mega event in 2014 in Indonesia. He was also invited to the Philippines in 2019 as a bonsai demonstrator and a judge. His article, The Lore of Bonsai Soil, has been recently published in the BCI magazine. Over to Rajiv and Manglaji for learning more about Manglaji's bonsai journey. Namaste, thank you. Namaste. You are a very senior bonsai master and a uh, teacher. We would appreciate if uh, you share some thoughts about your bonsai journey. What drove you to take up this art of bonsai? I was always a nature lover. You know, Rajiv, I was born and brought up in a very small and cynical town. The town was surrounded with the green, lush green hills. And uh, when I shifted to Hyderabad, I have missed all this, you know. I left behind the memories of that nature and the beautiful panorama. 
to keep myself connected to the nature i have uh, nurtured a greenery in and around my house once you know what happened i was in need of some garden material and i visited a garden exhibition held in hyderabad and it's a pleasant coincidence i was uh, uh, i have seen a beautiful uh, ikebana arrangements in one ca- corner of the exhibition i was very impressed by seeing the depiction of a nature in the small vases through flowers and twigs uh, this my love of nature you know led me to study the ikebana when i study ikebana i came to know about the bonsai art but not very uh, the another coincident happened that time not just a pleasant but it was it i can say it was a golden uh, golden because i have got a invitation through ikebana group to visit a bonsai exhibition arranged by dr dlm prasad and rajiv wow, i was stunned by seeing the all the uh, nature in that miniature and i realized that this is the art that will keep me connected throughout my life and i immediately resolved to study this art and experiment and that's how my 45 years long journey started with bonsai Oh, that's wonderful, Thai. I imagine it must have been very hard in those early days and difficult also. Uh, but uh, tell me, what all did you do to obtain material for your bonsai? Oh God, what all haven't I done, Rajiv? You know, I'm not a that rich person, but I never hesitated to buy any plants, you no know, bonsai material for any cost. Many times I roam around the outskirts. and get wild materials that too in the rainy season i bothered my husband so many times and forced him to stop speeding car in the middle of the road and for just to get a uh, uh, collect uh, a uh, cutting from some bush i never felt ashamed also to pick any uprooted plant plant lying on the busy roads even funny thing i remembered i begged a uh, one very unknown person uh, for uh, his uh, potted bougainvillea and i got it one more funny thing i remember that i climbed on a tree to get uh, air layering on G- gulmohar and wires must have been a problem in those days too how did you deal with it didn't face much problem by reading books I used copper wire, what is easily available in electrical shops, and uh, for the thicker gauge, once I have straightened the wire hanger from my wire wardrobe, that I remember. Finally, you know, after long search, we found a, a good shop in uh, um, old market area for the aluminium wire, and that was the permanent source. Great! I think you must have thoroughly enjoyed your bonsai journey. Thank you for sharing your reminiscences with us, Tari. Thank you very much. Namaskar, मैं रीवा जैन सेंट्रल जोन की इंचार्ज हूँ मुझे आज बोनसाई क्लब इंदौर से मिसेस पद्मा कलानी और मिसेस तापड़िया का परिचय कराने का जिम्मा दिया गया है जैसे चंदन की खुशबू किसी परिचय की मोहताज नहीं होती हमारी आदरणीय हर दिल अजीज मिसेस पद्मा कलानी और मिसेज नीलम तापड़िया का नाम बोनसाई के क्षेत्र में किसी परिचय का मोहताज नहीं पद्मा जी के धैर्य एवं लगन के स्वभाव ने उन्हें बोनसाई की ओर आकर्षित किया और लगभग 35 सालों से पद्मा जी बोनसाई की साधना से ही लीन रही हैं मिसेज कलानी ने लगभग 300 पौधों को बोनसाई के शिल्प में डाला है उनके करिश्माई व्यक्तित्व के कारण ही वे लगभग पच्चीस सालों से इंदौर बोनसाई क्लब की अध्यक्ष रही हैं और उनकी बोनसाई साधना को समय समय पर अनेकों पुरस्कार और प्रशंसा पत्रों से सराहाया गया है जब बात बोनसाई और मिसेस कलानी की हो और उसमें मिसेस नीलम तापड़िया का जिक्र ना हो तो ऐसा हो ही नहीं सकता है दोनों का परस्पर स्नेह और बंधन बहुत ही आकर्षक है मणि और कंचन जैसी यह जोड़ी अपने आप में एक अद्भुत मिसाल है मिसेस तापड़िया भी लगभग 33 सालों से बोनसाई से जुड़ी हैं और लंबे समय से बोनसाई क्लब इंदौर की सेवा करती रही हैं और वर्तमान में वे क्लब की अध्यक्ष हैं 
जैसे स्थापड़िया के समर्पित बोनसाई प्रेम को समय समय पर अनेकों पुरस्कार से नवाजा गया है जैसे स्थापड़िया को लैंडस्केप बनाने में विशेष महारत हासिल है आइए अब हम सुनते हैं उनके सुनहरे पल उन्हीं की आवाज में धन्यवाद भाभी बताइए आप बोनसाई में कैसे आए बचपन से ही मेरे को थोड़ा गार्डनिंग में इंटरेस्ट था और उसके बाद पता नहीं कैसे थोड़ा ज्योति बहन से परिचय हुआ और मैं ये पेड़ों का जो तने का ब्यूटी दिखती थी उनके पेड़ों में और इन सब से बहुत ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट हुई फिर ज्योति बहन ने मेरे को बम्बई में एक मास्टर जॉन नाका की क्लास में इनवाइट किया बस उसके बाद तो मेरे पंखों में जैसे उड़ान भर गई और मैं एक के बाद एक मैंने बहुत सारे बॉन्जाइज बनाए ज्योति बहन की देखरेख में फिर उसके बाद में मैंने उनको इनवाइट किया इंदौर में एक क्लास लेने के लिए तो उन्होंने एक फर्स्ट बिगनर्स क्लास ली जिसके कारण हम लोग काफी लोग ऐसा लगा कि इसमें इंटरेस्टेड है तो नीलम तुम कैसे इंटरेस्ट हुई भाभी वो जो क्लास आपने करी थी उसी समय मैं तरानी हाउस आई थी और उसी समय पहली बार मैंने बॉन्साइज को देखा था आई थिंक आज के तीस पैंतीस साल पुरानी बात है भाभी और कलानी हाउस का जो वो एटमोसफियर था और वहां पे अपन ने जो उनसे सीखा था उससे मेरे को भी बहुत ज्यादा फीलिंग हुई कि आई शुड गो इन टू दिस आर्ट एंड लर्न और तब जब आपने ज्योति बहन की बेसिक क्लास की तब मैंने वहां सीखा था और हम पर फॉर्चुनेट थे भाभी कि ज्योति बहन का हर महीने यहाँ आना हुआ हाँ। और उससे हमको बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला फिर क्या हुआ कि जब ज्योति बहन ने आना शुरू किया तो हमने हर महीने एक क्लास उनकी रखी जिसमें हमारे कुछ लोग जो ज्यादा इंटरेस्टेड थे वो रेगुलर आने लगे उसके बाद में उन्होंने हमारा बॉन्जाई चैप्टर फॉर्म किया जो कि इंडो जैपनीज सोसाइटी से एसोसिएटेड था और उस चैप्टर से फिर हम लोग काफी सीरियसली ये आर्ट को ज्वाइन करा और इसके बारे में और और बुक्स ली नीलम ने हमारे लिए प्लांट्स और पत्थर क्योंकि ये यंग थी भागा दौड़ी कर पाती थी तो ये सब उपलब्ध कराए जिससे हमको ये सब करने में बहुत आसानी हुई और सबसे पहली बड़ी बात तो कि इन पत्थर और वो के कारण जो बोनजाई के लैंडस्केपिंग बने तो सिंगल प्लांट जब लगाते थे तो इतना मजा नहीं आता था तो लैंडस्केपिंग फर्स्ट डे से ही इतना इंटरेस्टिंग लगता था तो मैं फिर लैंडस्केपिंग में ज्यादा इंटरेस्टेड हो गई और मैंने फिर काफी लोगों के लैंडस्केपिंग करे मैं बहुत ट्रे गार्डन बनाए हैं अपन लोगों ने हाँ। बहुत ट्रे लैंडस्केप हाँ। किए हैं एग्जीबिशन में एक तो अपना हमेशा आइलैंड बनता ही था एग्जीबिशन और लोग बाग खड़े खड़े देखते रहते थे भाभी याद है आपको याद है और अपन ने आज तक नहीं नहीं करते दस बारह एग्जीबिशन तो कर ही ली है मास्टर्स भी अपन ने कई बुलाए बाहर से भाभी एंड सीखने को भी बहुत अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी मिली अपने उन सब के साथ में बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला अपन ने बहुत सारे बाहर जाके सेमिनार्स भी जो अटेंड किए हैं वहां पर भी लर्निंग बहुत हुई भाभी अपने और सबसे बड़ी बात भाभी कलानी हाउस की जो स्पेस थी वहां बहुत काम किया अपन ने हाँ स्पेस के कारण ही जब कलानी हाउस डिमोलिश कर रहे थे तो बुद्धि की और सु की हमने एक एग्जीबिशन बनाई तो उसमें भी बहुत मजा आया था भाभी बहुत मजा बहुत मजा आया था In India, bonsai in the 80s took a huge leap and entered the international arena. Mr. Nikunj Parekh, the ace leader of the 80s, kept the Indian forefront active in this international platform. Many foreign masters came and took classes, and a new trend of interaction in bonsai with overseas was established. A culture of education exchange between many countries was developed. The first World Bonsai Convention was held in Japan in 1989, where India also took part. Now, let's hear about the 80s and experience their journey.
Welcome one and all. I am Bhavna Shah, practicing bonsai for 36 years. I am a committee member of Bonsai Study Group of Hindu Japanese Association, Mumbai. I am also a director of Bonsai Clubs International. To introduce Mr. Nikunj Parekh, who is a person of eminence, widely respected globally, is an honor and a pleasure. Mr. Nikunj Parekh was instrumental in providing Indian bonsai and international platform through Bonsai Clubs International and World Bonsai Friendship Federation. He is also known for organizing events, in inviting upcoming masters, arranging bonsai tours and picnics, and also providing and introducing new bonsai material. Welcome, sir. Sujata Bhatt is a dynamic and enthusiastic committee member of Bonsai Study Group of Indo-Japanese Association. She is also a director of Bonsai Clubs International. She is practicing bonsai for past 35 years. She gives her technical expertise to all the group activities. Over to you, Sujata. Uh, sir, welcome to the program, uh, Salute to See Us. I'm really privileged to have this conversation with you. So, uh, I would like to know who introduced you to Bonsai and when did you start it? First of all, Jyoti introduced me to Bonsai and then I was very fortunate that the first event we planned was with John Naka, the well-known US world master of Bonsai, who could speak very clearly about the theories and practices of Bonsai in the art. So, once you started learning uh, the art of Bonsai, how did you expand your horizon? Because we know that you had a big international presence too. So, so how did that come from out? From 81 to 89, we started spreading across India to our affiliated chapters which also gave us an opportunity to invite uh, bonsai experts from all over the world and that made us travel walk across and we started sharing knowledge together so that as I say that everyone can have the wings to fly on their own and that helped and we started making the Nichin Bonsai magazine uh, published from 1985 onwards, we shared continuously knowledge on technical aspects of bonsai, its techniques and training and varieties of trees suitable for bonsai. Internationally, we could travel all over the world along with our group to many of the international conventions and that brought us to Saburo Kato Sensei. And being part of the Indo Japanese Association Bonsai Study Group, we had opportunities to meet many of the bonsai personalities of the world and basic thoughts of Japanese way of working, its discipline, and meticulous ways of working, minute observation of uh, your creations, and day to day working with devotion. So focused attention and in time and on time, that was the theory practiced by Japan as a disciplined state that we learned the bonsai techniques and subsequently we met Tom Yamamoto and Kawamoto Sensei. And that, in, that was resulting in their inviting me to join the World Bonsai Friendship Federation as a director for India region, they used to call it. And subsequently, I insisted on them calling not India region, but South Asia Bonsai region. And that's how the uh, World Bonsai developed. And from 89 till 2017, I continued to represent the India region or the South Asia Bonsai. And uh, now my third question, uh, 
you know, when you started, uh, there was really no material available, you know, like in terms of uh, ceramics and wires and plants. So how did you go about procuring all this? And how did uh, you get it? Yeah. I would not like to boast, but I have to say that both of us believed in Atmanirbhar Bharat then in 1980s. Oh, and we encouraged ceramic artists, wire makers, additives and chemical makers to come forward to help us in making all these things available for India. Thank you so much for this conversation, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Dear friends, my namaskar to all. I am Kamla Jaju from Friends Bonsai Society, Hyderabad, and I am the treasurer of the society. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mrs. Shri Devi Apparao, the president of Friends Bonsai Society. The society was formed in 1983 by Dr. Pushpa Jaivan with just five members. Today, we are a team of 100 members. Shri Devi Ji is a very dynamic president and has organized excellent workshops, demonstrations every month by senior masters from all over India and overseas. Since past one year, in spite of the pandemic, we have had regular demonstrations by masters every month. We have organized regular exhibitions on a large scale to promote the art of bonsai in the city. Shidevi herself has a collection of more than 1000 plants of rare varieties from all over India. She is encouraged and supported in her hobby by her husband, Shri Aparao Garu. Interviewing her is Mrs. Lalita Shri, the Dynamic Secretary of Friends Bonsai Society. She has been a member since past 25 years. She is a highly skilled and enthusiastic bonsai artist. She has her own bonsai nursery where she takes regular classes, thus promoting the art and increasing our bonsai fraternity. A visit to her nursery is a treat to the eyes. Lalita Shri is now interviewing Mrs. Sridevi Devi Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Lalita. And here we are here to discuss about bonsai. I want to know about your bonsai journey, how you started off. Yes, Lalita. 1983, Mrs. Pushpa Jayan started Bonsai Society, Lalita. 1985, I joined this society, came to know about it, and then uh, I thought it will be very nice uh, art, so I joined. Then you had a society, and it was a group of how many people? I have very few people, Lalita, four or five people. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I started, uh, uh, I learned uh, basic Bonsai, Lalita. Okay. Um, Mrs. Pushpa Devan. Yes. Then Mrs. Pushpa Devan handed over the charge to Mrs. Mrs. Mangala Rao. Mrs. Mangala Rao. And I think Mangala you learned uh, yeah, from, from Mrs. Mangala. So I read with Mrs. Yogi and Nitin Pare uh, of Bombay. So from there we used to get good feed, uh, feedback and then we enjoyed the bonsai very well at that time. Uh, then Mangala Rao has taken the has taken charges. She was very good, very important artist. I also learned from her. Yeah. I, yeah. Learned, I also learned from her only. And then uh, during that time, we organized one bonsai wing of the uh, uh, NTR park. And then it went back to only we, we maintained bonsai society and maintained that. Mahala Ram is left for yes. Pune. Then I have taken charge. As during my time, we used to have, uh, we used to take uh, during artists, uh, we conducted many events like uh, Sri Yogi event of the society. Yes. And 30 years completion of the bonsai. Yes. Because our society is one of the oldest society in uh, bonsai in India. So it is, was a great honor. I mean, it is an achievement also to do yes. this yes. two events. During uh, particular, uh, 25 year celebrations, we have uh, invited Pujji Ranta Sajjan Swami Ji. Yeah, this location and then we renovated the bonsai society. And that year, the year celebration also, we uh, Swami Ji uh, renovated the uh, society. And then we released a stamp also. Yeah, we released uh, a stamp. bonsai stamp. And then uh, that was very successful. Yeah. We do have a yearly exhibition also. And then uh, 
our members like uh, very senior members like Kuch Parity, Govindra, Yaltab Sudha, and then now we have a dear hour to join us. We share our experience with the Sukhuna Society, yes. also yes. spreading the art of voice. We learn a lot from one another. And then uh, our youngest, uh, uh, Veer Chaudhary, is yes. very good, uh, very good, he uh, is very good teacher. Yes. Also, I am so we are having very good, eminent artist with us. And if you have heard about your bonsai journey, how the bonsai was, the art of bonsai was spread. Where did you get the material from? Where did you get it from? I like that. Beginning, it is very difficult to get from materials. Some nurseries used to go and get, uh, and in Godavari district, there is one place, Kadiyam. From there, we used to collect Kanto, not much, but mostly we used to collect from wild also. So we used to do from wild collections. Uh, wild collections. Yes. We used to go for three weeks also, yes. and then we adapted it with just in some forest uh, also. We, we used to go and get some collection. Mm-hmm. But mostly, uh, mostly they are from ficus varieties. One or one or two, one or two my plants from uh, oil collection only, they are very good ones. Oh, oh, oh. So we have kind of collection was from different places, from distant nurseries and some wild plants. And if you have heard about your bonsai journey, how you uh, collected the material. Yeah. Any experience in soil and your uh, stone hunting? Yeah, yes, well done. Well, uh, soil is was really one experience I have got. It's a bad experience. Regular soil, but later on somebody suggested to put chicken manure, it will be very nice for the plants. Then we brought and then both of us bought and put a lot of manure in each bonsai, in all bonsai slowly died. Okay. So that is very bad experience. Later on, Mangala gave us one formula of bonsai. That we are composition, bonsai composition, or soil composition. Soil. Okay. Okay. Going to a place in uh, Dehidabad, there are two big hills with uh, full of forest stones. Forest rocks. So that we used to collect and then bring, and I used to, we used to distribute to other members also. Okay. In this journey to bonsai, my husband has uh, he, very of cooperative with me. He always encouraged me and he helped me in it, uh, all, all the way. So, well, that is why I could be able to do this uh, very well. And we can conclude this conversation saying that we have got a bonsai teacher here, bonsai yes. president of the society. Hi, a very good evening to all of you. I am Shamala Prasanna, today's MC for Srishti Bonsai Study Circle, Mysuru, which was formed in the year 1997 with a very few bonsai enthusiasts of Mysuru, and today it has grown to a strong almost 50 members club. I am delighted to present to you all our inspirational leader, founder president of Srishti Bonsai Study Circle Mysuru, Dr. Maya Sitaram, who has done a PhD in developmental studies. She is a passionate bonsai enthusiast who motivates all the members and works very hard to bring Srishti to the forefront, keeping in mind the development of our club as a priority organizing workshops and demonstrations by national and international masters for the benefit of our members. Interviewing her is Uma Mahesh, who is the secretary of Srishti Bonsai Study Circle since three years. She is an active member of our club, ever ready to put in all her efforts in arranging bonsai events, communicating very well with all our members. We are very happy to be part of SABF which is responsible to bring all of us, the whole bonsai fraternity, together on one platform in an organized manner. Now, let's see how Maya Sitaram's journey in bonsai world began and went on. And here I present Maya Sitaram and Uma Mahesh from Mysuru. Dear Maya, our founder, president, Dr. Maya Sitaram, Bonsai and bonsai related topics, very interesting to discuss. Brace yourself, let's go. Bonsai and art in itself. How were you connected to start with? What drove you towards bonsai, Maya? 
a well Uma, as you know, Mysore is very famous for its Dasara. There are many cultural activities and plant related activities that take place during that time. My family would take part in all the flower shows and win many prizes and sheets. As a child, I was asked to go collect those sheets and prizes. That's what I think made me get interested in gardening as such. Later on, my father, being an avid gardener, got me introduced to foliage plants, roses, anthuriums, you name it, he had it. The only thing that he didn't have was cacti and bonsai. So I, initially I had a fairly good collection of cacti and succulents. Now it's bonsai, bonsai and only bonsai. Yeah. So moving forward, share your experience in the search of a teacher who could teach you bonsai. I used to go to Bangalore for my doctoral thesis. At one time, I found a board saying bonsai taught here, bonsai classes. I knocked at the door, got into it, and then I realized it was bonsai Srinivas who was teaching the art. Yeah. So he got me introduced to this art. And later on, when I started working, I shifted to Bangalore. I was working at Indian Institute of Management Bangalore. And every second Saturday is Bonsai Club. Bangalore Bonsai Club would meet there. That is when I also met Suna Aunty at the rest of the gang. And together we called ourselves Briksha and organized many workshops, programs, exhibitions. It was really fun there. Which year was this? This was in the late 80s. In the late 80s is when I started going to Bangalore. Started working there. Moving on. When and how the bonsai club in Mysore formed? Was it difficult? Interestingly, the club was formed again during the Shara. This was in 1997. I think it was on the 3rd of October 1997. With the support of my father, I dared to do a 1% bonsai exhibition at that time. And that's when Shristi was born. We were about 10 to 13 of us at that time. I think now we are about 50. 50. Yes, on an average, we stay at yeah. 50. Yes, so next year we'll be celebrating over 25 years. Yes. At that time, was it really difficult to do one size? Yes and no. We didn't have a problem in terms of uh, space because many of our members have huge gardens. Yes, and they very graciously allowed meetings and even workshops to take place yeah. there. It's, it's, yes. it's still continuous. Yeah, but the problem seems, yeah, but we're really blessed with that. And the problem seems to be getting the right kind of material, the right kind of manure, the right turntable is something I never even heard of. Yeah. And I remember lugging wires from Omaya Garden, Japan, once when I went there. And how mad we were for that. And it was very difficult, you know, to get anything here was very difficult. And uh, later on, and bonsai soil was something that whatever soil you use for other plants is what you use for your bonsai. That was the norm that we had. And any plant or any bonsai that we saw was only good to look at. So you would say, wow, this is so beautiful. We never even imagined that this is something that we could also get to our home, get to improve our own plants. We could never imagine doing that at that time. Now things are slowly changing. Remember, at that time we didn't have internet and we didn't have Google. Definitely. Yes. So that is a problem there. Yes, we it's are growing fun. and we are moving forward because this hobby doesn't leave you on your own. It pulls you back. Yes. We have a long way to go. Miles to go in the COVID Yes, Same here. Even I think the same. Thank, Thank you, Maya. Thank you so nice much. To you. A very good afternoon to all my bonsai friends. Usha Modi year for the Jyotirmay Bonsai chapter, Calcutta. We hold meetings once a month, which consists of demos, workshops, and nursery visits. We also call an international master once a year. With his seminars, we are able to learn the new techniques, new and latest techniques. Prabhaji Sridhar, most gentle, soft and graceful, our senior most 
and founder of our club. She brought to us the world of bonsai 40 years back with her guidance and always giving her tips to us. We are very thankful to her. Rashmi Gupta works hand in hand with me. We both learned bonsai also 40 years back and since then we are able to uh, run the bonsai club of Calcutta. Without her help, because of her passion for love, for bonsai and plants, we are able to continue and learn new things. We all members, we eat, drink and sleep bonsai. Thank you. In our program, salute to seniors. We have Mrs. Prabha Sridhar, who is a veteran bonsai artist and the founder member uh, founder of Jyotirmai Bonsai Chapter, Kolkata. She will share her experience along her bonsai growing journey. Pranam Mausi ji, we would like to know what happened, what inspired you to take up the art of bonsai? It so happened about 40 years ago, we were visiting Bombay and I was stuck with the beauty of little plants on some of my friends' balconies. I was very fascinated to learn the art. Contacted Mr. and Mrs. Nikunj Parekh from a to form a chapter in Calcutta under their Bonsai Study Group of Indo-Japanese Association. Bonsai chapter was formed in 1985 we had the opportunity of having Mr. Peter Chen of UK, Mr. Chase Rosade, Mr. Yamamoto, and many other prominent masters from all over the world. I requested Mrs. Manorama Veera, a friend of mine who was already teaching the art, to come to Calcutta and give classes. At that time, Jyotimi building and the hall were not ready. So we used to hold classes in my garden under the trees with the background of melodious music of chirping of birds. These classes become popular and art caught up, grew loops and bounds. We, and that's how we started the chapter in Calcutta. In those days, we didn't have any bonsai nurseries like we have today, Prabhaji. So how did you manage to get plants suitable for the art? In the beginning, they were just starting of uh, learning. So we didn't need very thick plants or very good plants. Whatever we could find in the nurseries, we used to get them. And also from our own gardens, we could find out and make them, convert them also. It was very interesting to uh, convert our own plants also. Bonsai also required special tools and special pots. Normal tools and pots were not uh, adequate for the art. So how did you manage those? Because in those days, India did not have tools, etc. Luckily, at that time, there were a couple of good <laughs> ceramic uh, 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 places where they could make the ceramic pots and our own designs could be given to them from the books and they, by that they did convert some plants for, from uh, pots for us which was very interesting and also tools the masters got us tools especially Mr. Peter Chen was very very, very helpful in that. And he used to leave his tools also and we could get them converted. Yes, I, I, it was very a pleasure uh, hearing your journey. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and paving the road for the bonsai rich India. Thank you most. I really sincerely hope that many people become involved in this learn, in learning this art, regardless of their age, and enjoy nature. 
ओके प्रणाम रिचिंग अप टू द स्टार्स फॉर्जिंग अहेड इन टू न्यू लीव सेलिब्रेटिंग द मिलेनियम एनिवर्सरी ऑफ ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी नाइनटीज विल ऑलवेज रिमेन द लैंडमार्क इरा ब्रिंगिंग अप चेंजेस इन बॉन्जाई टेक्निक वॉज द क्लैरियन कॉल ऑफ नाइनटीज ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम क्लासिक टू सरलिस्टिक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मैकेनिकल टूल्स जिन एंड शारी बिकेम द फैशन टू बी परस्यूड इन बॉन्जाय आर्ट द टूल्स बेसिस fertilizers bonsai plant nurseries and ceramic pots manufacturing industries came up during the period the craft entered bonsai in a big way with global network mobile laptops and digital technology bonsai art spreaded like fire suiseki the art of appreciating weaving stone became as important as bonsai art the bonsai community grew expanded and bonded together Suiseki became synonymous with Mr. Pondeswami's name in India. He authored the first book on Suiseki for India. Mrs. Urvashi Thakkar introduced young kids to this art by holding bonsai exhibition in her school on Parents' Day. The seeds of bonsai were being sown not only in the little minds but in the minds of parents as well. The time had come where all stakeholders in bonsai were bubbling with dreams and energy to accomplish the magic of bonsai. Similarly, ceramic bonsai pottery became synonymous with the name of Mr. B. R. Pandit. Residing in Bangalore, Mumbai, he captured the national market of bonsai pottery. He was awarded Padma Shri in the year 2017, which is the highest award of recognition for an artist. without taking much time let us enter into the era of 90s बड़े बेटे अभय पंडित का है। 
और साउथ एशिया दो हजार फेडरेशन के एम्बेसिडर है वो अपने पिता के नक्शे कदम पर चल रहे और अपनी मिट्टी के पात्र के क्षेत्र में अपनी जगह बना रहे हैं आप बताए कि 1968-69 में आपने पोट्री बिहार में कहा से शुरू की जी मेरा जन्म गौरवबाग में हुआ जिला नवादा है और वहीं पर एक जयपुर का नारायण जी का सोभदरा आश्रम है तो वही आश्रम में एक ट्रेनिंग कम प्रोडक्शन सेंटर में काम किया और वहीं से मेरा शुरुआत हुआ है फिर वहीं से मेरा एक अप्लीसन गया सेंट्रल विलेज पोट्री इंस्टीट्यूट खानापुर बेलगांव कर्नाटक में फिर एक साल की ट्रेनिंग में वहाँ पूरा किया फिर वहाँ ट्रेनिंग होने के बाद मैं कला नगर बांद्रा अजगांवकर साहब के पास आया और वहाँ से मेरा शुरुआत ए के बारा और बोनजाय पॉट का हुआ तो तीन साल उनके पास था तीन साल के बाद फिर हमारा समय के अनुसार काम का बदलाव हुआ सोफिया कॉलेज पॉलिटेक्निक में मैंने वहाँ इंस्ट्रक्टर के रूप में टीचिंग शुरू किया और उसी समय थोड़ा बन जाए और एक बनावान बनाया और एक हमारी मैडम सुखिया इसे सुखिया डायरेक्टर थी पॉलिटेक्निक का उनका एक फिनिशिंग व्हाइट हाउस बाल्के समय था तो उनके साथ ही हम वो भट्टी में उनके पास भट्टिया जो तो पकाया अब वहाँ सुनिया वासवानी जी ने भी आया अब हमारा वो बोझा कंटेनर है उन्होंने खरीदा बहुत अच्छे से लगाया था एग्जीबिशन भी कराए थे वो मुझे मालूम तो आप स्टूडियो पॉटरी सिरामिक कार्ड का जो सफर है उसके बारे में जरा बताइए हाँ ये जब मैं सोफिया कॉलेज पॉलिटिक में था तो मैं बहुत आभारी हूँ उनका जो डायरेक्टर मिसेस सुफिया और सीटर ड्रैगन जा थी उन्होंने मुझे ललित कला अकेडमी भेजा इसके मिरमेरा के पास क्रॉकरी वगैरह बनाने के भेजा तो वो सीखने के बाद मैंने फिर एग्जीबिशन भी किया बम्बे में जागीर गैलरी सिमर हजार की गैलरी और दिल्ली में त्रिवेणी कला संगम में आठ हेटे जो अलका इब्राहिम जी के आर्ट गैलरी उसमें भी एग्जीबिशन किया अभी आपका सिरामिक आर्ट कहाँ कहाँ डिस्प्ले है जैसे एयरपोर्ट पे हाँ मेरा काम कुछ अच्छे अच्छे जगह में भी है टी टू जो बम्बे में एयरपोर्ट इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट है उसमें वहाँ हमारा एक बहुत बड़ा ब्यूरो लगा है और उनका कंसेप्ट जो है वो हमारे राज्य सिटी जी है उनके अनुसार ही वहाँ काम किए हैं फिर बहुत अच्छा बात है कि अभी फिलहाल इसे वर्तमान काल में मैं पटना के अशोक सिंह हाँ अशोक सिन्हा जी के मार्फत उनके द्वारा उपेंद्र महा थे मार्गदर्शन से मैंने बापू सभागिर में बहुत बड़े गांधी जी के जीवन के ऊपर मैंने मिरर बनाए हैं और ज्ञान भवन में और एक चंपारण में भी गांधी जी के जीवन के ऊपर मिरर बनाए हैं मिस्टर पन्नुसामी Born in a village near Coimbatore in 1940, completed his master's in political science and is a fellow of Institute of Marketing and Management, Delhi. He recently retired after a very long tenure as chief executive for a large group of businesses of sugar and alloy industries. He has a large collection of suzuki and bonsai. He was appointed by the World Bonsai Federation as an international consultant. He has visited many bonsai gardens during his tours to Japan, China, Korea. He started Lonely Tree Bonsai Club along with 17 enthusiasts. He is deeply interested in sports, holding offices as national president of World Badminton Federation of India, member sports development authority of Tamil Nadu, etc. Our interview Vidya Anand, a student of Mr. Pandasamy. Learning bonsai art for over five years. What drove you to take up this art, and who was your teacher? 
I think it was sometime in 1990 when I came across this art, divine art of uh, Suseke, the viewing stones. Uh, I came across Japanese and Chinese uh, writings, books, articles in uh, uh, foreign, article, uh, foreign magazines. Then I continued to read these magazines looking for these uh, articles. Uh, I started collecting bonsai by the time, I'm sorry, uh, Suseki, including the bonsai. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, in 1998, there was a world convention of uh, bonsai in that Suseki was also displayed. I uh, took some stone from here and displayed in that world exhibition in China, Shankai. I was given a citation and recognition. So this stone hunting is a very uh, fascinating um, event. Uh, I used to go along with my members to uh, river beds, uh, sea shows, uh, and then uh, rocky hills. And uh, we used to uh, collect stones, bring them here, uh, and view them, and make uh, days and days us for those stones and how I started this. Then after the World Convention, uh, my, uh, I was intentionally collecting these stones. In India, at that point of time, there were no teachers and maybe I was the only fellow who collected the most stones, Susekis. I also published a book on Suseki, uh, uh, containing only my stones. And how did you go about collecting the plant material for your bonsai? Yeah, good bonsai, you see, that is my passion, uh, you see, how I started. Uh, I used to collect uh, from nature this Yamaguri. Uh, uh, in rainy days, I used to take my boys to, to rocky hills where these and then abandoned uh, mm -hmm. temple buildings, abandoned buildings where these uh, bonsais uh, were naturally born, naturally grown. Uh, that is how I, uh, my collections, my total collection of 40% is Yamaguri. Uh, they are very well, some, some bonsais are yes, more than 90 years, 100 years, things like that. So, the collection of uh, 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 bo I mean, bonsais are yeah. Yes, I have to support the bone size. And how did you uh, uh, go about uh, getting your tools, turn tables, pots, and all that? Was turn, turn tables, I uh, made it myself locally because the type of table is okay. So some some modifications I get table, turn table. And then uh, mostly these tools, when I toured Japan, uh, Korea, China, and all that, that part of time I used to go to places like Miami. Uh, and uh, other places in China and Japan uh, where we get good tools and made tools, nice tools. I have a large collection of tools in fact. What are the fertilizers you apply for your bonsai plant? Fertilizers, organic fertilizers like cow dung and uh, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, uh, and then uh, any material bone, uh, bone meal and then uh, neem meal. Like that. Yes. Okay. Dear friends, I'm Nirmala Devra, a past president and today's master of ceremony for India Friendship Bonsai Society. Our club IFBS was established in the year 2003 with a bunch of friends in bonsai. And today our enthusiastic members are growing well in the art of bonsai due to our regular workshops. We also hold yearly exhibition and invite masters from India and overseas. Friends, presenting here is our founder president of IFBS, Mrs. Urvashi Thakkar. She's in the art of bonsai since more than 35 years and she is also one of the oldest and eminent bonsai artists in Mumbai. Interviewing her is Harsha Hinduja, a present president of our club. Harsha is president of IFBS since the year 2008 and in her presidentship, 
Our club has grown leaps and bounds. She also is the vice president of Ikebana International since more than a decade. Recently, she received a commendation award for building mutual understanding and friendly relationship between the two countries, India and Japan, through bonsai and ikebana art. Now friends, let us experience their memorable moments of bonsai art. Thank you. Hare Krishna, a very warm welcome to our founder president Urvashi Thakur, who started our bonsai club, India Friendship Bonsai Society. I salute Urvashi, who is my senior. She is right here with us. Tell me, Urvashi, what drove you to take up and motivate you to follow this art form? I've always grown up with a garden in front of my house. My dad also had a beautiful big garden and so did Jairaj. So luckily we had a nice landscaped garden and one of Chatrapujpai, my father-in-law's friend had come over. She's an IS officer. Her name was Kamubin Patel. She saw the garden and said, why don't you have some beautiful bonsais here? I said, wow, that would be lovely, but I don't know how to make bonsais. So she said, but you can come home and I can teach you. Uh, so I said, wow, that would be lovely. So I went and uh, so Kamubin taught me bonsais. I was really happy. She had about 100 old bonsais which she had been training since the last 40 years. That's how it began. Tell me, was it difficult for you to find a teacher to learn this art? To find a teacher was really not difficult because I did the advanced course from Jyoti Bin Parekh and then I also joined the Indian Bonsai Society where Lata Bin was the president and she also organized many seminars where I was lucky to learn from John Naka. He was a pioneer in bonsai in the world. Then I also learned from Sujay and Rupa, uh, Ratna. I kept going for all the seminars, Pune, Hyderabad, Baroda, everywhere. It was really very interesting and it didn't stop. Was it easy for you to find all the plant materials and the tools, for example, the wires, the pots, the soil, the turntable, etc., etc.? Initially, I looked around in my own garden or my mother's garden or friend's gardens where I could find old species and I love to train the old species into bonsai. After that, we tried a little more and went to the forest and took out some old species and again trained them. It was really interesting and also the nurseries. The nurseries had some wonderful plants so we started training those also. So we had really good collection of plants. Was it difficult for you to form a club and gather so many ladies? It's really not difficult. Harsha, you've always been so kind and generous and you've always hosted all our meetings. And it's been so lovely that you also hosted all the masters from all over the world who came. It was really very nice of you. Nelly was also there. And uh, lucky for us that we can also hold exhibitions every year. Chamnabai Narsi school also always sponsors the exhibitions where at least 500 bonsais are showcased and all the members take part so enthusiastically like it's Charuben Patel, Hansa Ben Shah, Parul Dolly, Asha, Sunita, Maya, everyone, everyone, Nirmala Devra also works so hard, everyone's working together and we also have our Ikebana exhibitions. And the opening is done by the top most Bollywood stars like Hema Malini, Jaya Bachchan. It's so lovely. Everyone and children just enjoy these plants. And so many children also get interested in bonsai, so which is very important. Thank you. Uh, that was really beautiful. All the comments that uh, you're seeing on the chat box as well were very heartwarming. I'm really grateful. Um, there is some important information that President of SABF, Mrs. Nia Prasad, would like to share with all of you right now. So please uh, just stay tuned for this important notice. Over to you, ma'am. 
thank you all. A very huge, big thank you to all the participants, organizers, executors, and the seniors who have taken part in that. And they have really worked very hard to make it a successful venture. But these seniors today, they have again made a history by participating in the inaugural program of SABF Digital Library. This is a landmark achievement on their behalf. I salute you all and thank you so much. This library is going to be linked to WBC, that is World Bonsai Corporation Center at Mysuru. So all the digital recordings of all the clubs, whichever landmark things which you feel that you have done it right from the 70s onwards, you all can pick up two of them and you can send it to us for gifting it to WBC Center. We want to make it a successful venture. And second thing, my very, very humble request, please fill the feedback form because in that there are many sections which tell you what you want, how you want to do it, what you want to project, the gardens, the nurseries, the uh, businesses. So please fill that so we know what to give you. The thing is we are there to serve you and you are there to guide us. This is all I wanted to say. And once again, thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Over to you, Karan. Thank you, ma'am. Um, yes, so we're going to be at the end of our program and I'm going to share some details with you all, like we always do. Um, it's really, honestly, uh, before I share this details, it is heartwarming to see all the positive responses that um, everyone's received. Uh, it it's, it's honestly has been a very beautiful program, as you can see in the comments. So if you'd like to stay in touch with South Asia Bonsai Federation and the good work that they're doing, uh, you can reach out using the details mentioned on the screen. Uh, that is either through the WhatsApp number or through their email. And uh, like we said at the start, we are sharing the feedback link right here on the chat box, as well as in the groups using WhatsApp. Please, please, please do share your feedback. As you can see from our first part to our second part, there has been a slight improvement and we're always learning, we're always improving and, and that's the beauty of life. So please do share your feedback with us uh, so that we can all we can continue giving these, these sessions to you. And uh, of course we are in Lighten Sapiens and we curate and host sessions, programs and exhibitions like today on various topics like gardening, art, birding, meditation, etc. And you can reach out to us using our email, mobile number, or any of our social media handles and website. Uh, details are in the chat box. So uh, at this point, I'd like to thank you all once again for, for being with us throughout this entire journey, throughout the two parts, and, and being here in huge numbers and giving a salute to our seniors. And, and um, thank you once again, and hope to see you all very, very soon for our future programs. We will share those details with you as and when we come across it. So thank you once again thank and you. have a have a nice week. Thank you so much.